My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is Rich. Hey. <laughs> Richie, Rich. Yeah. Rich. Yeah. Anyway, um, you're in the a recent uh, slideshow I did. Right. And right. Uh, I liked your stuff when we talked, and I said, hey, You lived right near me, so I'm going to come by and check out your stuff. Yeah. And here we are, we're both Brooklyn uh, residents. Brooklyn, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, uh, you know, when we got here, when I got here, and we started talking, and you started telling me your, your history of buying and selling gear, I was of course, immediately fascinated by that. Like, so this is where you are as of today. But, right. Well, let's just talk about what you have now and then we'll, we'll go backwards. These are the 600M Klipsch uh, bookshelves. Right. Um, so I, I mean, I got these, most of the stuff I got was from like just used components on either right. eBay, audio guns, something right. like that. So I, I settled on these after I had a, I had more expensive speakers in these, uh -huh, uh -huh. but you had Focal. I had I had a set of Focal 1028 uh -huh. BE twos, uh -huh. so they're a lot more expensive than. But I I was interested in seeing what the sound difference is between very high end uh -huh. speakers and just like more affordable uh -huh. like entry level speakers that are still yeah, yeah. you know good. So. I, you know, I, I tried it out at the end. I, I just, I didn't, I didn't see that. I didn't hear that Interesting. big of a... And how much, of a, those, because these are 650 in the box, Yeah, right? so these I ended up getting, I got these as like manufacturer refurbished stuff okay. from, okay. from from one of the big brand, big big stores on, on okay. eBay uh -huh. for 400 bucks. 400 bucks? Yeah. And your, but your full cows? And then my the full cows are like, over four thousand. Yeah, right? like over four. So you so. went from a four thousand dollar speaker to, a, in this yeah. case, a four hundred dollar yeah, speaker. Yeah, there and, was. Yeah. And you didn't have buyer regrets. You don't say, oh my god. No, no, not at all. Like, I mean, the, they obviously have their qualities, and they have stuff they do better than. They're obviously much yeah. more refined. Right. You know, sounding and speakers. More full range. More full range because there were towers, right. um, uh, but like the actual just liveliness of it mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. and. And maybe it, I mean maybe it has to do with the room acoustics or something. I don't know, but it I I I like the sound coming out of these enough, mm -hmm. where it it didn't make sense for me to spend that kind of money on it. You know, nice. and and the, I mean I guess the I, I actually had before the Klipsch 8000 towers oh, okay. right before these oh, so that were the ready. big yeah the uh, so i had those but my, my wife what? just said that no that's not big. happening they're way too big okay because they're i mean they're not that tall but they're very deep those okay. those yeah, sets yeah, yeah. and so they stick out like all the yeah, way like yeah. in the, so yeah. um so as so i as a compromise i said all right we'll, we'll, we'll keep this <laughs> keep the same brand because yeah. they at least to me like the they don't have the, they didn't have the, these the bushels don't have the same like yeah. body oomph to the, to Definitely the sound right, obviously, right? Because, right? but from mid, like from upper mid range to the top end, uh -huh. it sounds just as good. Mm. And I'm actually trying, I have a buddy of mine who lent me a subwoofer yeah. that I can try out and see if it fills it in, which is has pretty nicely. Like right. I'm still missing a lot of like the mid bass yeah, yeah. stuff that you're not going to get. Mm -hmm. um, but it, I like, I love it. And actually, I these bookshelves tend to, at least when I was comparing them with the towers, mm -hmm. here they they disappear more in the room. Mm -hmm. So with the other ones, I felt like I was looking at the left and right movement of the sound more coming from the speaker uh -huh. as opposed to just coming uh -huh. from uh -huh. the air right so we sorry. acknowledge your dog sorry your there's name? a yeah this is winston winston he's hey. part of the show okay he, he, he needs the... attention yes. <laughs> yes um so yeah so then i just you know what for for the price like these i love like the dynamics of the sound uh -huh. like when it, it doesn't shout at you, but it just like the music just like comes yeah. oh, I, forward I love and, these speakers. and I, I love it. And it sounds like alive. Yeah, right? it sounds alive more, even more so than the full, the four. The, I mean, the full cows had the that I had had the fancy beryllium tweeters. Mm -hmm. So it sounded perfectly like tone out tone. And, yeah, and yeah. I, like when I after a while of going through speakers more and more, mm -hmm. I, I thought to myself, well, I don't know why I'm chasing 
accuracy mm. in, yeah. <laughs> in You've because been listening to my show because <laughs> yeah because I don't I have no idea what the real uh, like studio sound was actually right. going on like right. I don't know what they, it sounded like to them I don't know what it sounded like when they were recording the masters or what the mastering engineers did. Like, I don't understand why I'm chasing this right. stuff that I have no idea what I'm chasing anyway. Rich, it's interesting that you're saying that because I, I just shot a video on, mm -hmm. that, on this subject. Okay. That not only do you, do, you don't know, but the, the, the band that played on the record doesn't know either. They know more than you do or I yeah, do. Yeah, because they're not and listening in the studio. They're playing and they're, somebody else is right, listening to it. But also, yeah. the, the, what, what they did and what was captured by the microphone and how it was mixed and how it was mastered those are people making subjective opinions about what that was. They weren't yeah. literally making a document right. of people playing together, assuming they actually did all play together, which is a big assumption depending on the kind of music. Yeah. yeah. So there isn't really any there there to be true to for the exactly. most part, you know, yeah. depending on the kind of music. Let's say with yeah. a symphony orchestra, even there, that's recorded with a hundred microphones and right. they mix right. everything. So this obsession with that what if some audio files have about being true and hearing true, true, what the true, band yeah, heard. Yeah. No, no, no. Because, um, you know, and so many they, people always talk about this stuff. Yeah. So let's say you said, I am totally obsessive. I got money to burn and I'm going to buy the monitors that they used in the studio. Right. And I'm going to recreate the, uh, the acoustics of the uh, studio that was the, the, the uh, mixing room. Yeah. And I'm going I'm to be faithful. I'm going to get it all nailed down. Yeah. And then I would say to them, congratulations. Yeah. What are you going to do with your all of your other recordings? Yeah. You build rooms for each one, <laughs> right? Know? Right. And, the and the components that right, they use right. to to, to so record it, and so mix it's it. A, yeah. So it's a totally ridiculous thing to chase after. Yeah, yeah. The the point of it all is is to enjoy listening to music. Yeah, and and, and yeah. you can never know what it sounded like. So and, and and what you just said that you went from the focal to these clipses and, yeah. and you're a happy camper and you Yeah, know, absolutely. You know, everything sounds different. Yeah, and I and I and the reason I, I I like I wanted to know what it was that I was missing out on mm. from high-end speakers to like budget uh -huh. speakers, I uh -huh. guess, right? You can say. And so I wanted to see what that gap really uh -huh. was. Uh -huh. So I started at, I, I did a little yeah, reverse. Exactly. I started, yeah, started at, at the, the top, top and, worked your way down. and I worked my way down until, and I mean, I don't, I, how you can't get any cheaper than right. buying a set and of these, And not right? only that, but I think it's interesting about this, this trajectory of yours is yeah. that you actually had essentially the larger version of this speaker. Yeah, I did. And so I, you already yeah. did that part. Yeah. I, 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 well, in that sense, like uh -huh. I would rather have the, the towers okay. of these because uh -huh. I, I like that there's some there's an energy to those that uh -huh. bookshelves like right. just because of the size of it they can't reproduce right, of course, it's fun. Right. even with i mean you add a sub we're going to show the subs soon, yeah you're o you're only getting like the low end base right. like under 80 hertz right. or whatever right yeah. so yeah. all well, the stuff I, in between you're not getting that impact sure but I mean, we used to talk to my friends to say they should be and there was a, i don't know if you ever heard of this company sue research H i have yeah i was doing yeah i was because looking at it for a while they i don't know if they still do they actually made like a mid base Woofer. Oh, all so right. in other words, instead of just a pre in other words, a woofer that was designed to go up to like a hundred or hundred and fifty or something can right. do it well because a lot of subs can do it, but that's yeah. not what they're really for. Right, right. So Sue made a, a mid bass woofer specifically for that purpose. Okay. Yeah. I think it would be you know it takes it's a hassle of course to implement it and now you got to integrate that with the sub. With the, the yeah, yeah. It's not it's, an easy thing to yeah, do, but for people who are obsessive. It's yeah, like, it's it's, it's hard to, enough for me like to try and fit the sub in right, here right, right. and it's funny is when i put the sub like even now like i don't have like i guess most people like they have a specific place where they can put a sub right. like they don't have the pleasure like of being able to put it put wherever it, it fits best in right, the room right, right, right. so the spot that i can put it in uh -huh. leaves a, a dead spot of bass right mm -hmm. in the center listening position uh -huh. of his chair so it's bad. so when i get like two feet closer to the left or to the right or backwards, I get uh -huh. full bass, uh -huh. but right where I'm actually sitting really? listening, it, it's, it's got the dead spot. Oh, well, so, I, so, it's, yeah, so I don't know what I'm gonna do there yet, but uh, it's, well, it's in testing purposes. Or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll right give now. you some opinions about that. Yeah. So. Um, but anyway, so okay, so we got the speakers covered. Yeah. Uh, before we show this, 
We're going to show this. All right. So this was your turntable up until very recently. Up until two weeks ago. So okay. this is a Technics uh, SL1301 fully automatic. This is from like the late 70s, I believe. Uh -huh. So I got this on eBay for 130 bucks, mm -hmm. um, which was supposed to be completely working properly. But mm -hmm. when I got it, the auto start function wasn't working. Uh -huh. So I ended up being able to get like a partial roof. So I ended up paying 70 bucks nice. for the turntable. I, I opened it up completely. Thankfully, like I'm pretty good at uh, messing around with broken things and trying to fix them. Uh -huh. So I completely fixed the entire uh, auto start feature. I like re, re uh, uh, what do you call it? Just uh, refinished everything. Mm -hmm. I cleaned it up and it looks yeah, pretty, really great. good. Yeah, that's good. So, and I, it's even got like a, a Shure V15 Type 4 cartridge wow. that by itself, and, and I look. And the stylus was good on the V15? Oh, yeah. It's, oh, yeah? it's great. Yeah. It's, it's not the original stylus, uh -huh. but it's just, I, I don't know if w which brand or aftermarket yeah. type it was. I, it looks like just like a generic uh -huh. brand, oh, okay. but it was, it was pretty new. Yeah, and yeah. it sounds great. And so, like the cartridge itself is worth more than what I paid for yeah, the yeah, for yeah, the yeah. for the for the whole thing. And like that's like a great deal, I think. That, yeah, that I was able to. Super <laughs> yeah. deal. Yeah. I mean, thankfully, you know, if, if you can, if you're able to tinker and fix stuff, mm -hmm. then you can get good right. deals with things that aren't working properly. Then and you can right. fix them, and you get yourself a great you know, right. system for, 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 for much less than but a year. But, but, but it's interesting. You got, you moved from the tactics to this. Turn yeah. Table, so I just got, like, whoa. so I just got this to went like a couple of weeks ago. Uh -huh. Um, this is a made in the, this is a made in Japan. Denon. Yes. So this is a Denon DP 59 L. Uh -huh. So it's direct drive. Right? So it's direct drive. It's semi-automatic. Mm. Um, but, I, I found it sim like similarly good deal um, from a, somebody that was selling it locally, and they they just had they just had the machine and I, I like they didn't want to ship it so I was able to get it for like a much like half the price of what it usually costs so like I got this one for 350 bucks and nice. and they usually sell them on eBay at least that I've looked or an audio gun or whatever for like eight or nine hundred dollars. Wow. Um, so I was and, really and ecstatic to find it. You know? This is from the early '80s, I believe. Wow. Yeah, hmm. but I I just love the cartridge. This is the so this is a sure. I bought the cartridge separately. It mm -hmm. had a it had a grotto cartridge okay. on uh -huh. it, uh -huh. but I didn't like it, so I I sold the grotto uh -huh. and I got a. This is also a sure V15 mm -hmm. uh, Type Three, but it has the special like micro ridge origin oh. the the original micro ridge stylus. Wow from sure for that mm -hmm. which i from my research is very rare because yeah. they don't make them anymore right, right, right. and it sounds to me fantastic right wow. um so i think like i got a pretty pretty sweet sounding deck for for like for like for an awesome deal right. <laughs> um so but good. i love it like this like it, like the look of it the wood like it's so soft so heavy like yeah it's massive it it's, probably weighs it is. at least 40 pounds. yeah it's like it i think it's like 18 kilos or 19 kilos or uh -huh. something like that uh -huh. so it's like yeah. yeah so it's it's pretty significant um thankfully it fit on my table because <laughs> I, I was when i first picked it up i was kind of scared that it would fall off the back uh -huh. on its legs uh -huh. but thankfully it fit nice. it fit just right um but yeah i mean the, the comparing that to the technique the techniques works uh -huh. excellent it works great but I mean, just the look of it alone, in terms of quality look, uh -huh. like, I, oh, I, I yeah, love, sure. like, that's amazing. It's yeah. dropped yeah. dead. So we yeah. go from analog to uh, digital to your streamer. Yeah. So this, so I have the Cambridge uh, CXN streamer. Mm -hmm. So this is the original version one, mm -hmm. not the version two. Mm -hmm. um, so the version one, the reason I got it is, I, as far as I see, the only difference between the version one and the version two was the version two has, like, Google Home and like Alexa integration, uh -huh, uh -huh. and this one doesn't. Uh -huh. But it still has the same network functionality, mm -hmm. like I have a NAS stream, uh, drive mm -hmm. that I just pick up my music oh, okay, from, okay. and I have Tidal also that's part of the, that's integrated into it. Okay. So I can run my Tidal through there as well. Mm -hmm. And I, but these are like half the price 
of the version twos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I got this one for 300 bucks mm -hmm. on eBay as well. Mm -hmm. And like, that's, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, I didn't see any need to spend like the three or 400 bucks extra to just get like Google integration into Rich, it. I got an idea, you should write a book called The Art of the Deal. The Art. <laughs> I didn't read that one by the way, but I should, okay. I should get one of those. Yeah, a whole new kind. A whole yeah, new kind a whole new, audio. new the audiophile deal. The audiophile deal. art of the, the deal. The, yeah. the audiophile deals, yeah. yeah. Um, there used to be this guy who wrote for Stereophile, Sam Telling, in his column, originally, I don't think it was always said that with the same title, but it used to be called The Audio Cheapskate. <laughs> it was a magazine of people reviewing really expensive stuff, and he's like, "No, I'm going to review only the, the only cheapest, the cheapest stuff, stuff." Yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't by used. It wasn't used stuff, but just like oh, yeah, okay. everybody else right. is doing expensive. I'll do more affordable yeah. stuff. Yeah, I think because like I've, I'm I like to I my primary thing is just to find value mm -hmm, somewhere, mm -hmm. and that so I like I'm not I'm not trying to go out and rush and buy something like right away that uh -huh. I found. Oh, this is awesome! I got to go get right. it. I just like. I wait around, I, I lurk, like you, lurk. you mentioned You're earlier, a yeah. I'm a lurker, and when I find something that pops up, uh -huh. that I, I just happen to, you know, somebody just happens to say, okay, sure, I'll sell it to you uh -huh. for that price, uh -huh. then great, and then I, you know, it's, it may not be um, uh, like the, the, the thing, like the thing I actually want most of all, but uh -huh. it's, it's up there, right? Uh -huh. I'm getting 95% of it for, 30 percent of right. the cost yeah right so it, it worked that well and it and that, that's how i've gotten pretty much everything <laughs> and then the amp so the amp is a marantz pm 8005 so this is like the previous model to the one that's currently out because i think the one currently out is the 8006 so this one's the 8005 mm -hmm. so I read on a lot of comments on your video right, right. from the sub thousand dollar system right, right, right. that were saying there's no way that guy got that system under a thousand bucks for the for the slideshow for the slideshow yeah. because right. the amp alone is worth a thousand dollars. Right. Oh, and by the way, point, just not so that people don't get confused. You didn't have the den on turntable. I did not have the den on right. turntable. So I, I had right. right. So that was not part of it. The when we when you did the video it was right. I just had the Techniques turntable right. that right. was seventy bucks. Yeah. It turned out. Um, so I got the, the Marantz amplifier from a guy locally who had it listed on eBay, but he didn't want to ship it because it was too big and heavy for him or whatever. And so I just, I, I bid on it like a normal, right. like anything else. I just went on, I, I bid on it. I can just go pick it up. He was actually here in Brooklyn, not too far from me. And I bought it for 250 bucks. Uh -huh. like, so I got, it was originally like eight or $900 as some commenters have already noted. Right, right. And I, so that was like the biggest savings I got uh -huh. for the entire system was saving $600 on the amp. Right. Um, so, and it, it worked perfectly, like right. not a thing wrong with it, like clean as it can be. So that, that was. So what you're saying here is you, you actually, didn't pay full retail price for anything. For anything, no, no I, <laughs> I don't. The, and the newest one, the the the, the Eclipses, yeah. uh, uh, you bought for basically uh, two thirds of the retail price. For right for these for the bookshelves, yeah. I mean the bookshelves. I'm not actually sure what the retail price of it is. Probably sure five something. I think it's six. Because the normal the, the standard finish is five fifty, so I think this okay. one is six fifty actually. Well, this is a standard bl oh, it's a, just uh, black, black finish. Oh, it's yeah, not the piano. yeah, it's, yeah, it's not the piano. It's, it's just a regular. Yeah. Right. So you so, got it for four. And I got it for four hundred bucks on on. Uh, to, it was like a floor model sale okay. or whatever like that, right? So I got those for four hundred bucks also. So that's a pretty good. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's the the smallest savings I got from any of the right. stuff here, but still yeah. like significant. Right, right, right. Um, so yeah, that, that was, that's how I've been able to finagle my way into. And, and last but not least, the sub, which is on yeah. loan, right? That's, you didn't So yeah, it. so I didn't, so this one's on loan from a buddy of mine that I just wanted to see how much, how the bass would, you know, be in my room. Yeah, yes. he's, he's looking for his toy. Actually, let me, let me, can, can, by the way, before he knocks down the, okay. the speakers. <laughs> Um, so, uh, that's a, a rhythmic audio sub. I don't, um, how do you spell it? I don't, I don't it's R, 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 Y, T, H, M, I, K. Okay. Um, 
so, and I went on their site, I loaned it from a buddy of mine who had it and he just said, hey, try it out, see if you like it. Mm -hmm. um, so that way you can figure out if you want it or not. Um, it's an L, I think it's an L10. Okay. So that's the smallest version that they make that's sealed mm -hmm. with a 10 inch woofer. Okay. And it's very like small profile, which I like. Mm -hmm. and, and your it, wife likes. And my wife likes, like it actually just, just out of luck, Mm. I have this, we have this little like uh, wooden thing over it that uh -huh. holds my records also. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. And, yeah. and it fit right underneath it. Oh, 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 so right, it's right, perfect right, size right, right there, right? right, right. So I think I, the, uh, the SACD player is also the, the, the oh, other right, thing oh, right. on there. Yes, I, mean, I don't know if you want to cover that. Right. Um, so this is a, a Sony uh, DVP 9000 ES. So it's a CD and SACD player. Uh -huh. And this is old too. I mean, this is, I don't know if it's from the 80s or 90s. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it looks, looks but great. But it was supposed to be Sony's top of the line flagship uh -huh. uh, player when it came out. And it was, and I looked at the retail price back from when it came out and it was like $1,500. Mm, but for that the wasn't player. the flagship. That was up there. But that, well, maybe, maybe not flagship. flagship. Of that line, but not because they made a five thousand dollars. Okay, yeah. So, right, right, so below that, then I guess, right? Um, but this is supposed. This one has like this. This thing weighs like thirty or forty pounds. Yeah. Like by itself, it's huge. It's really heavy. So that's a. So that's where I got, you know, four hundred dollars for the speakers. The major. Uh, deal was for 250 bucks for the amplifier uh -huh. and I can prove it to whoever no, 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 doesn't it, <laughs> doesn't, it didn't mean literally to the penny on yeah it is actually 250 bucks to the penny uh -huh. but um the uh so I got for 250 bucks for that 70 90 bucks for the SACD player uh -huh. 300 bucks for the network player 70 bucks for the turntable like and, there you and, the, go. And, and the subwoofer doesn't count so. right so what was that what was yeah there? Yeah. Well, so, we, we, yeah, yeah, get working on that art of the deal thing. The art yeah. of the audio deal yeah. by Rich. All right. So. Okay, I think we did it. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show coming to you from uh, Rich's uh, apartment in Brooklyn. And I'll see you guys real soon. All right. Bye bye. Absolutely. Thank you.